all of the conversation from government, from the scientific advisors to the government, is all about vaccines. The only way we can achieve herd immunity is through a vaccine. Mm -hmm. So not naturally, but synthetically through this product that the industries that they represent, the interests they represent, is going to provide. And this isn't actually uh, what the science is actually saying right now. Let's look at the conversation on immunity. We're talking specifically about T cells. You've covered this many times before, but I think it's worth covering again and to keep talking about this in terms of T cell immunity. What are, what are what do we know about T cells right now? Well, we know that they are more important actually than antibodies, according to multiple peer-reviewed papers, many of them that you've shown on this program in past episodes. We'll show you another one in a minute. And that's on the basis that they provide long-term uh, immunity as opposed to antibodies, which appear for a, a particular period of time and then disappear once the infection's gone. Sure, after months or something yes. like this. So yes, T cells actually more important than antibodies, which is, that totally defies the whole conversation that this crisis led off with mm -hmm. last uh, winter because antibodies are directly associated with vaccines. Mm -hmm. That's why. So this this seems to me, Mike, why the media and the government want to keep this conversation into the antibody mm -hmm. and vaccine conversation because they don't want you to talk about the larger immunity picture, which is the adaptive immunity systems that everybody has as well. Absolutely. And that young people have so, so well. So cross immunity you're talking about derived from prior coronaviruses. So we're, they're, they're finding that people have immunity to COVID uh, without ever having caught COVID. So cross immunity from previous coronaviruses. So again, no need for a vaccine uh, if you had had exposure to a previous coronavirus. And so this is why children uh, most likely are less affected by COVID-19 because of T cell immunity. And also it's why fewer people are susceptible to COVID-19. So they're talking about 90% susceptibles out there in the public, these big numbers that we should be afraid of. And that's why we need a vaccine. Mm -hmm. Like we can't get back to normal without a vaccine. But actually what we're finding here with T cells, Mike, is uh, yeah, we probably are at herd immunity right now because of T cell immunity is, is one of the things, as well as antibody immunity uh, too. So. Let's look at uh, one of those papers here, uh, and this is this is from Research Square. So SARS-CoV-2 T cell um, epitope, epitopes uh, define uh, heterolog <laughs> heterologous uh, COVID-19 induced T cell recognition. My scientific pronunciation might be off, but th <laughs> that's the basic thrust of this paper: is T cell immunity uh, to COVID-19 is very effective. Mm. So. Now, moving on, we have our health secretary here, uh, Minister for Health, Matt Hancock, MP. Our strategy is straightforward. We must act to suppress this virus while protecting our economy and education by shutting down the economy and, sh and making closing the schools, closing schools and quarantining children until a vaccine or mass testing is ready. So everywhere we look, the statements, Mike, from the government it's all about, this is all for the vaccine. Oh, it always has been about the vaccine. And we knew that, we, we, we suspected that, but now they're saying it. So this is the big difference this week, is the government is actually saying this now. Boris Johnson's admitted it, uh, as has Matt Hancock. Yes. So this, this is a sea change, I think. Now, c contrast this conversation we're seeing in the UK with the health secretary, uh, with the science advisors, Valance and Witty, okay, they're ignoring the whole issue of T cells. They're, it's all about vaccines. We can't get back to normal. Nothing can go back to normal. The economy, nothing. You can't have your life back. You can't meet your friends without our vaccine, which is coming in six months. So we need to lock, lock down or have a type of lockdown scenarios for six months. That's the UK conversation. Now, a different conversation is happening in the United States. Let's take a look at this video. Uh, uh, just before we do, is this, is this a change in... Uh, the conversation in the United States. This is a 180 degree change from from anything we have heard previously from uh, the, the heads of scientific uh, advisories and so forth in the United States. So uh, this is the one of the heads of the U U.S. Coronavirus Task Force. This is Dr. Scott Atlas. And listen closely to what he's saying. And it's, to me, very significant that he said this. Listen. 
Dr. Redfield today said that more than 90% of the population remains susceptible to coronavirus. Do you agree with that assessment? Yeah, I think that Dr. Redfield uh, misstated something there. And the re last time and I'm going to answer your question if you let me finish. Uh, the, the data on susceptible that he was talking about was his uh, surveillance data that showed that roughly 9% of the country has antibodies. But when you look at the CDC data state by state, much of that data is old. Some of it goes back to March or April before many of these states had the cases. That's point number one. Point number two is that the immunity to the infection is not solely determined by the percent of people who have antibodies. If you look at the research, and there's been about 24 papers at least on the immunity from T cells, that's a different type of immunity than antibodies. And without being boring, the reality is that according to the papers from Sweden, Singapore, and elsewhere, there is cross immunity, highly likely, from other infections. And there is also T cell immunity. And the combination of those makes the antibodies a small fraction of the people that have immunity. So the answer is no, it is not 90% of people that are susceptible to the infection. So I guess my question is for, I'm not a doctor, I defer to your expertise on this and to his, but so Americans hear one thing from the CDC director and another thing from you. Who are we to, to believe? You're supposed to believe the science and I'm telling you the science. He's not that's telling it. us science. I'm telling you the science, and that's the answer. And if you want to look up all the data, you're free to. You can also talk to the following epidemiologists. I guess, why is he still going out before Congress and speaking if you say he's misstated today and the yeah. president said he misstated last time? Americans are looking for the best information right now. Yeah, and I'm giving you the best information, and it's confirmed by people like Martin Kulldorff, who's a Harvard epidemiologist at Harvard Should Medical School. Let me finish, please. please, please. Jay Bhattacharya and Johnny Anides, both epidemiologists at Stanford, uh, Professor Gupta, University of Oxford. These are people who know the latest data on the immunology and what's happening, and I just recited it to you. They really don't like it whenever uh, somebody is giving them information that doesn't fit with their narrative. Did I'm talking the, about the, the, the journalists here. The press. Did you yes. see how fast they jumped on him? Yes. He was about to name the, the, the top epidemiologists in the country and a British epidemiologist, Dr. Sunetra Gupta. Uh, Gupta from Oxford University, mm -hmm. uh, someone who's really shut out of the mainstream media conversation for the most part uh, in the UK. And he's naming them uh, in front of the White House press corps. And they're trying to shut him down. So I, that's significant, Mike. That's a very different conversation. You won't hear that from Anthony Fauci. And again, a lot of people believe this is why Anthony Fauci has been slightly sidelined recently. I think the administration is starting to realize that they have been had uh, in the early stages of this. That This threat, this crisis has really been pumped up by bad information. Mm -hmm. We'll see more uh, verification of whether this is the case in the coming weeks and months.